Well, some moderate House Republicans are looking to flex their muscles right now as the party fights to keep its majority next year. And the Washington Post reporting this. They said, quote, the House's focus on the far right's demands over the past month has irritated Republicans who represent swing districts or are worried that an extreme legislative agenda will push voters away and hand the House majority uh, to Democrats in 2024. Let's bring in Republican strategist Rena Shaw. Uh, Rena, always good to see you. I'd like to first identify some of these lawmakers. Like, who's flexing their muscles here when we talk about moderate pu Republicans fighting to save the House, keep the party from extremism? Who is it? Who are we talking? We're looking at people like a Congressman Lawler, Mike Lawler, uh, up in New York, who won his seat literally within just a point. I mean, these are people that have won their races with such slim margins and have a tough time again because they've understood that what they're up against is the juggernaut of Democratic messaging. And, and I'll get to that in just a second. But instead of naming names, I, I, I'm giving Lawler as an example of somebody that's been able to fundraise well, has come out as a nationally, as a moderate, but now stands before the Speaker of the House and is saying, you're making it very hard for me to come back to Congress and do the work that I was elected to do this time. Why is that so? And, and I think that's where we really have to center the conversation is around the Speaker of the House, who, again, as we remember at the top of this year, took 15 ballots to get that seat. Right. And to, OK, instead of names, then let's talk strategy. I mean, what are the moderate Republican strategy and what are the issues that will likely help them prevail? And then what maybe might be electorally risky for them instead? Well, first, let's talk about uh, what's at stake. So right now, the nonpartisan Cook Political Report has about 25 seats, at least 25 races marked as toss up. And in other words, those races are hard to predict because about which party or which candidate is going to win the race in 2024. So that's already a tough thing. When you've got 25 races on the block, it's hard to figure out who should I give some attention to here. When you're Kevin McCarthy, you can't just single out one member like my favorite Congressman Mike Lawler or another favorite of mine, Congresswoman Nancy Mace in South Carolina. These people are youngish. Um, they express, you know, sort of um, these moderate views. You, you don't see them as part of the House Freedom Caucus, for example, that is traditionally more far right. So their strategy has to be an all of the above approach. They've got to fundraise well. They've got to be able to talk to their yeah. constituents about those constituents' needs. But then they've also got to be able to look like they're in lockstep with national Republicans. But money is the name of the game here. So at the end of quarter, one, what was most surprising to me is fundraising totals showed those um, those Republicans that were in swing districts, it showed them as raising more money than vulnerable House Democrats. That's really interesting that right That is now. fascinating. And, and, you know, to your point, speaking of Kevin McCarthy, we all saw what happened during the speakership vote, the debt ceiling fight. Uh, how does all of that impact him and his leadership? And how does he kind of balance all these concerns at play? Well, he certainly doesn't rest easy knowing that some of his moderates are raising money really well because it's not just money that they've got to be concerned about. Traditionally, the speaker does go coast to coast, showing up in various congressional districts, looking like an ally and boosting certain members that are vulnerable. And again, when the speaker shows up, more money sort of flows in. Uh, but again, despite that fundraising prowess, the GOP really has to be worried about what could be the potentially long-term negative impact of the over overturn of Roe versus Wade. And now we saw a trio of SCOTUS decisions last week, SCOTUS being the Supreme Court of the United States. We saw those decisions be really, really a shock to the consciousness. They help they help conservatives, of course. The yep. um, you know ending affirmative action in the college admissions process, that's something that a lot of Americans wanted to see, particularly conservatives. But when we talk about abortion and what GOP-led state houses are very likely continuing to do, which is making more extreme decisions, it makes it really hard yeah. for federal Republicans to win Rena, over the yeah. hearts and minds of independent-minded voters. That's Kevin McCarthy's biggest challenge. Yeah, I hear you. Rena Shaw, I'm so sorry that we have to keep the conversation there. We'll have you back on. We could talk through the rest of this show for sure. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Sure. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.